I'm Nathan Lee, I'm a senior managing consultant at Energy and Environmental Economics, or E3. Wow, well, I don't know where I would start. I think we solve, we, we have a, a really diverse set of clients across our consulting firm um, and use Plexus to solve pretty wide array of use cases and problems, um, depending on what the clients come to us with. On my side of the house, I think the integrated systems planning or ISP team, um, we are looking a lot at long-term capacity expansion um, questions. So how, how much different resources do we need uh, to make sure that we're meeting load reliably and you know economically over the next you know, 20, 30 years? Um, so a lot of times that's capacity expansion modeling with some production cost modeling um, to support integrated resource planning, IRPs, um, or kind of near-term kind of capacity expansion needs. Um, sometimes we are also helping clients um, explore the, I guess, the value that different resources add. So maybe looking at um, production cost modeling, and understanding the costs and values of, of different resources. I think we also help clients um, understand what the optimal mix of bids to select as well. So we've started to support um, some clients with bid selection. So they may go out for an RFP and then want to know what is the optimal, most economic mix of re these bids to select. So we work that way. Um, we're also moving into kind of larger uh, regional kind of um, interconnection. So WEC or uh, mm. Eastern market interconnection um, models to look at capacity expansion and production cost models, think about pricing and forecasts um, over the long term over larger regions, but also to be able to just support the diversity of clients that may come in these regions as well. And so we have more insight when they when they do appear. Integrated system plan is important um, for a lot of our clients because planning is becoming more difficult. There's many stakeholders and there are many different factors to power system growth um, or expansion or planning. Thinking about them all in silos um, can bring a lot of complexities. If we don't know where transmission is going to be, we don't know where there's distribution issues, we don't know what load's going to be. So bringing all of those together for a more integrated or kind of combined planning process helps us solve more issues within one kind of planning process, but also to recognize and understand all the challenges that would come with, for example, just placing generation in a location. Do we need more transmission? Is there going to be congestion? Uh, where is the demand growth? Um, and bringing all of those pieces of the I know, planning puzzle together really helps just make a, the, I guess, the expansion planning process and the solution more robust and kind of um, address all the different stakeholders involved, um, their questions and concerns and challenges. I would recommend Plexos, you know, where it fits. Um, it doesn't always fit um, a client's needs, et cetera, but I would recommend it. I think it's it's helpful to have a tool that um, allows you to aggregate kind of all the data you need in one database that you can use for multiple different modeling um, activities or problems from capacity expansion to production cost modeling, et cetera. And yeah, you don't need to have multiple data sets and teams and tools. Additionally, it's, it's nice to have a problem a tool that's like well tested in industry, kind of um, recognized when you're coming to clients or presenting to you know large stakeholder audiences. It's not just um, some niche tool that only your team knows about. So it is very much industry standard. Also, it comes with you know support and help and and just lots of backup and support for the problems that you might face while you're using it, which is nice compared to you know some other tools that maybe are a little bit newer that do have great capabilities, but maybe just aren't there in terms of the support um, and just additional tools that are available to use it. Plexus is a really flexible tool um, that allows us to look at many different system types. Um, it's, it's kind of like a, um, a multi-tool. It's not just built for one system. Um, and as the energy system evolve, it allows us to kind of model and look at different technologies, different systems, different kind of layouts of what the system may be in the future, as opposed to, you know, a tool that maybe just models a certain technology or, or, or other considerations. So it's really flexible. 
um, and allows you to look at many different technologies, but also start to bring in some considerations that are more important now, such as gas networks, hydrogen networks, um, and think about co-optimizing those um, as the energy system changes. So the flexibility, I think, is really key um, for looking at long-term energy transformations. I have appreciated in the past the ability to um, email and get help within a couple of days for a specific problem that I am facing. Um, and that's really valuable so that I'm not just struggling through it on my own. Um, there are experts out there that can explain what the model's doing, the best way to approach a certain problem or challenge. Um, I often see modeling as like an, an engineering feat where we're really engineering a model to represent a system or a technology or a tool that can be quite complex. Um, and sometimes we need support for that and energy exemplars done a lot. I would. This is my first time coming to the Accelerate. I didn't know it was always Accelerate. I thought this was a, maybe a new name for this this year. So um, I would recommend it. It's in a nice place. It's nice to understand kind of what Energy Exemplar is working on, um, the new things that are happening, be able to sit down and connect with some of the people that maybe you just talk to via email, et cetera, um, and have the opportunity to ask questions and have these like kind of little lab huddle ups um, to learn about some of the new things like the cloud, which I haven't worked so much with, but could offer really great opportunities um, for us in future modeling, yeah. It's a tool that allows us to look at really complex systems may require a lot of data, a lot of inputs, a lot of assumptions, um, but allows us to do some pretty standard and, and necessary um, large analyses um, and, and optimization um, for systems that probably we wouldn't be able to do or it would take a long time to set up and evaluate, you know, outside of a pre-made constructed tool. It brings the ability to look at really complex um, problems and systems and makes it somewhat user friend, more user friendly um, for us to understand kind of what to do with the data, how to run the analysis, um, and then provides now with the cloud some tools for analysis and presentation of the results.